welcome to today's video on suicide now later in the video you'll be seeing a testimony from a 17 and 15 year old which are my little in fact my little sister and little brother things they're going to share things that i have yet to even know um, full details of and it's a powerful testimony i encourage you to watch until the end at the end of the video we're also going to be doing a prayer of healing and also of deliverance the lord put this in my spirit because this month is suicidal awareness month and i was seeing people post things like um just love on the people you never know when they're gonna go and there was just like this holy anger that built up on the inside of me that in reality that's not gonna do nothing for anybody um yes you can love on them yes it, it may save their lives but how many people do we do love on that we do call that we text and we're around them and they still end up killing themselves and it's i'm just genuinely tired of seeing people perish their lives not knowing jesus or even supposedly knowing jesus and ending their lives so soon because of the lies of this world and of the enemy so today before we um show this the testimonies before we go into the deliverance into into the healing and teaching you about god's word let's first start off with the statistics of suicide now according to the cdc suicide is a leading cause of death in the united states with 45,979 deaths in 2020 alone this is about one death every 11 minutes so by the end of this video according to these facts one person will die because of suicide or even more than one person in 2020 alone, about an estimated 12.2 million American adults seriously thought about suicide. And now imagine the, the amount of people that didn't even admit to it or the people that they did not ask. 3.2 million people planned a suicide attempt and 2.1 million actually attempted suicide in 2020. Suicide was among the top nine leading causes of death for people ages 10 to 64 years old. And it was the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 to 14 and 25 to 34. Now, according to the World Health Organization, more than 700,000 people die due to suicide every year. It is the fourth leading cause of death among 15 to 19 year olds. 77% of global suicides occur in low and middle income countries. And the most leading cause is ingestion of pesticides, um, hanging and firearms are amongst the most common methods of suicide globally. Now these are the, the leading causes of, death, of, of suicide according to researchers. The first one is having a psychiatric disorder, including depression, lost or conflict with close friends or family members, history of physical or sexual abuse, hear that keyword history, problems with alcohol or drugs, physical or medical issues, being the victim of bullying, being uncer uncertain of sexual orientation, reading or hearing an account of suicide or knowing a peer who died by suicide. Family history, again, history, of, of substance abuse, suicide, or violence, including physical or sexual abuse. Now here, what we are seeing in reality is the open doors that that spirit of suicide is coming in. That is what it is the majority of these people are dealing with is this a spirit of suicide that has come through one of the main causes is sexual abuse, physical abuse. Um, you like what I was saying with paying attention to that to that key term of history is the world does not the way the way the world sees generational curses is simply by history. Like when you go into the doctor's office and they ask you, does this run in your, in your family? Did, did your father or your great grandfather or grandfather have these things? And do you see it keep coming? That's generational curses. 
that's what the world calls it is this history it runs in the bloodline and christians can't even see or think that the that gener generational curses is even a real thing and here is clearly showing you that in ephesians 6 chapter 6 verse 12 it says for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places we have to open our spiritual eyes and stop being ignorant of the spiritual realm and what's going on around us and this is why it's so 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 important to be talk about to talk about deliverance and why we need it i mean think about it there's they started coming at jesus once he started casting out demons and they were saying that he had a demon in himself but he is saying how can a a house or a kingdom stand if it's divided amongst each other satan is not casting out satan now i want you guys to hear this testimony from my little brother and little sister about suicide and what it has done for them hi my name is jasmine torres i am johnny's sister and i'm 17 years old and this is my testimony suicide was a big thing for me it all started when i was 12 when i moved to texas and me and my brother we were promised we were promised the world like we were gonna be given everything that we wanted and when we got there it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows we were told no to everything and i wasn't allowed to hang out with friends i was treated i was treated the worst i was getting called names I was being down talked, I was being gaslighted, manipulated, everybody. And that's when the depression hit. I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone about my feelings. That made me build my walls up. I was more quiet, more shy, and I was never like that. I was usually the the child, the happy child. <laughs> um i was i wasn't allowed to express myself like i didn't get the chance to express myself um and i always wanted to look nice and certain people would make me feel bad about my body like insecure about it um skipping ahead to around 13 was when i started to cut myself um i would do it on both arms and i would do like the number of my age like let's say if i did like let's say if i was 13 or 14 i would do 14 cuts on both arms i also did drugs i was mostly high most of the time you know smoking in school to numb the pain and to cut myself if i and i cut myself at the same time <laughs> I was also wearing hoodies to cover it and to go to sleep after school to fade, you know, to fade it away. And I would also sleep away my pain. Every day it was just getting worse and worse. Um, I was always getting my phone taken, not being able to talk to anyone. At this time, I didn't know about God as much as I do now. But at that time, I didn't really look forward to him because I grew up Catholic. And we were taught the basic things. I didn't know nothing about deliverance or repentance or the fire of the Lord. So therefore I was suffering for years. I felt like I wasn't cared about for years, for a few years. And people were complaining about me, uh, wishing me the worst. And it was all because I'm a girl. I was always being stereotyped for me being a girl saying that I was going to get kidnapped and raped if I dressed a certain way or if I hung out with guys. Uh, I wasn't even allowed to hang out with my guy cousins. Um, I was always locked away from everything. Um, I did not have the childhood I was supposed to experience. I was mostly in my room all day. They didn't let me work, nothing. Um, they would complain about me being in my room and when I would do something with them, something always went wrong and I would get blamed for it right away. Uh, I felt like I was fighting a battle by myself, um, feeling like no one had my back and no one defended me, the people who truly knew me. 
as well. I never got the chance to express my true self and that built up a lot of walls along with getting my first heartbreak. Um, fast forwarding to when I was 14, I mean, to when I was 15 or 16, was I moved to South, to move to South Carolina and um, soon after my brother came to visit, I was still struggling with depression and anxiety and everything at that time. I just didn't show it because I was afraid to get a sent to a psych ward. Um, and I hid it very well, you know, making everyone think that I was happy, but I was dying inside, crying almost every night and would play very depressing music. Like very depressing. Um, but anyways, my brother asked me one day if I would like to be the delivered. Um, I didn't know what it was. Uh, so he explained it to me. I was hesitant at first, but I said yes. I've been delivered twice and I never felt more free. I felt like I was my true self again, like my inner self. And I never felt like, like I wasn't afraid anymore of anyone. And the first person I was afraid of was my dad. And I was able to stand up against him. Um, like I was confident. It was an amazing feeling, truly. I never regretted getting delivered. And while my brother was visiting, we did Bible studies. And it was a struggle at first, understanding the vocabulary, but I got caught up easily. And the stories in the Bible were just beautiful. And I love reading the Bible as a group because it's easier to read with someone who knows about it already rather than reading it by myself. After my brother left, I didn't go to church. Um, I was still getting treated badly, so I didn't go anywhere with anyone. After my parents moved out, I took care of myself. It was a struggle because I was working two jobs and going to school, but I was still praying and speaking more to God about not only my feelings, but my future and what I want for myself. That's when I turned 17. And then soon after that, I saved up money to move back to New York. I wanted to leave badly, but then I got summer school for attendance and I thought that was the devil holding me back, but it was actually God. I remember him speaking to me saying, I want you to graduate. Be patient, my child. I started crying because he knew how important this was for me. So that made me think to myself that three days was fine. I went to summer school for three days, which was fine. After leaving to New York, nothing has been better than ever in my life. I am more, I'm more happy, I'm closer to God. I got baptized. I'm a different person now being the child of the Lord. I wanted to tell all of you that God is always there for you and will always pick you up for a reason. He always has good thing he always has good things for you to come as long as you love him the way he loves us. Um, and as long as you put your faith into him as well. Faith is the number one thing. Um, don't ever give up. Um there was plenty of times I did, like there were plenty of suicide attempts, but he never let me, he, he never gave up on me. Um, he was there telling me to keep pushing and that he had a future, um, that I had a future to look forward to and that everything will get better. The Lord gives you blessings. It's okay to make mistakes as, long as you repent and you don't feed on to that mistake. God loves every single one of us. He died for us. I thank him every day for waking up and being able to have a meal in my stomach. We have to be grateful for what God gives us because there are poor people out there who are struggling more than us, even homeless people. And we have to pray for those people for a better life as well. God loves everyone and so should you. And I pray for the person who is listening to my testimony, the best in life, and that God blesses you with his love and with his wisdom and 
with anything in the world and for you to be a good person serving him as your Lord. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you for listening to my testimony. I hope this inspires anyone who is suffering through suicidal thoughts or anything. And I wish you the best and that God blesses you and he loves you. He's always there for you no matter what. You just have to go to him and he will serve you and love you as the father as he is. Thank you. Hi, I'm Charles little brother. I'm here to speak on how um, God saved me from suicide. Speaking out through um, what God called me to do and also speaking out for suicide awareness month. And so honestly, it all started when I was very young, when I was attacked by what I know now as the spirit of suicide. From what I can remember, it started at the age of 10. My home life wasn't always the best. I can never really say that I was good. And and most things I usually just always felt left out, or sometimes no one would ever want me around. But sometimes people would just always say I was favorited, but it wasn't always true because I always felt like the black sheep or just always felt left out of everything. So it all started from there, always feeling that way, just always wanted to make me wonder how would people feel or how would I feel if I just wasn't here anymore? And it all started off as a thought. I never really took it to heart. But until it started becoming something daily or just something that would happen more than once a day, I could just never get rid of the thought. And for a while, more it took on. I felt like it wasn't getting better, but then I knew I fell into depression. And with all, all of that being so young, now at the age of 11, just it all getting worse and worse. There were times that I was okay, but more bad than okay. I just kept getting that thought more and more, and I would feel like hours thinking about it a lot of the time. Also, at the same time, I was always helping other people and gave love, but never gave it to myself. So. It just kept going on for what feels like forever. Now skipping to the part where I turned 12. At the same time, I was living in Texas, but I went to visit family in New York and turned 12 there. But the night before my birthday, where, I, where life just all felt so tired and was done with, I finally took the thought to consideration and wanted to go away from it so that so that very night, I tried to kill myself due to substance abuse. At the same time, and that night, I saw my body slowly lose itself and fade away. And as I see my dead, and as I am dead, I was able to see my lifeless body there on my mom's couch. But as soon as I seen that, I heard a voice say to me, this is not the end for you. I have many great plans for you. This is not where you will end up. And at the same time, I didn't know what it was, but now I know it was God. And then after I heard that, I went back into my body and woke up. Now on my birthday at 4.08 a.m. And to me, I couldn't believe it. And I didn't think a lot of it. So one day God led my brother to introduce us little by little to the Lord. And honestly, I couldn't be more thankful than that. But back to it later on, I never really told anyone about my attempt to do it. Kept it to myself for years, but I no longer live in, but now I no longer live in Texas. Finally moved to South Carolina. Now 13, I did fall into a bit of a depression state, but maybe just leaving my friends is what hurt me. But other than that, I went through school and that very summer, my brother comes out to spread the word to us as God called him to do. At the start, I did feel confusing, or it did feel confusing, but I started getting more and more better. But at the same time, I was distancing myself and from everyone, because sometimes I always felt better alone, but it made me so feel sad to be alone. As I was there, I went outside to clear my mind, but my brother wanted me to watch a show with them called The Chosen, which is an amazing show, by the way. Um, <laughs> But I didn't walk out, but I didn't. I walked out 
right away and went to ride my dirt bike because it helped me with my thoughts. But then as I was riding around, I go back around to my house and see my brother outside. And knowing him, I knew it wasn't for nothing but me ignoring him. I went over and he asked me what was wrong and why was I always away from people? And I told him, I just like to be alone and I just wanted to clear my head. And he was just straight up to me and told me that it was bad and that anyone was trying to get to me. And I was just silent. And he asked me if I wanted to have deliverance done. And man, let me tell you, I could have never been happier to say yes to something. I was hesitant at first, but I said yes. And he said, okay. So I got off the dirt bike and we got into the car and we went into the parking lot. And what I mean by we is me, his wife and him, of course. So they explained to me what I had to do, which is forgive and pray for the Lord and for me to open my heart to the Lord, which I did. I was so happy and all, all there, it felt like it was all on fire. Not was I only delivered from suicide, from suicide, but spirit of depression, lust, anger, sadness, laziness, and more. But I did forget, kind of. But not only after, I felt so relief of getting all of that off my back and giving it to the Lord, because I felt so light after. It felt like I could fly. It just felt so good to be free again. And after what was many years of depression, I was really able to say I was happy again. And man, it felt so amazing. Not only I was able to speak in tongues, <laughs> I praised the Lord, man. I was so happy and it was just, it just felt so good. And we did more after, not, not only with me, but with my little brother, older sister, and my father. It was all just amazing. And after my little brother left, I, I met, sorry. After my brother left, now I turned 14. It was so good, but I did fall again, but only because I wasn't feeding the fire of the Lord. Then again, I learned. Then I got closer to the Lord, of course. I learned that um, the closer you get to the Lord, the harder the enemy will work. And so I fought hard with God, knowing I won my battle and was just fighting and doing what I can once again. God set me free. And all I couldn't be happier. It was just honestly amazing. But now I'm 15, serving and living for God. And honestly, what I want to say is, as, say is, if God can do it for me and millions and more, he can do it for you because he loves you. Do not forget, forget it. If you feel heartbroken, I will be there to give you a new one. He will always be there. Jesus died on the cross for you. Don't feel ashamed because God forgives and forgets. He will never leave you nor forsake you, as it says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. But yes, now I know if he can pull me out of depression, he will do it again for others. And I want to end this off with one of my favorite verses, and it goes like this. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 through 15. Now look at what the Lord has done for them too. They were bound with so many things that majority of my family doesn't know that I didn't know personally until the Lord was bringing things to my mind and I reached out and I stepped out because I saw the seriousness that we are dealing with situations that are life and death, literally. So when somebody's coming to you talking about giving hints about suicides, even people, they write things out, write out their suicidal notes and they plan it. They pick a place and everything. If you, and if you know these things, the Lord is putting that in your hands to go and preach the gospel to them, to go and cast out that spirit of suicide, of death and premature premature death a murder that's current trying to come against them and depression and anxiety because it's not just one spirit they work together the lord was showed us that there is a kingdom and they're not divided against each other because it won't stand and it'll fall so satan is working together with these other fallen angels and spirits to go out and inflict this oppression on people 
to cause them to feel like they're not worthy, to feel like they're not, there's there's no hope for them, to feel like the, the world would be a better place without them. And you may not even technically be thinking of wanting to kill yourself, but you used to may have the thoughts like I used to have thoughts where I would honestly just sit there. This is before I knew Christ, when I would just sit there and just be like, I really wouldn't mind if I didn't wake up the next day. But it wasn't until I met the Lord Jesus Christ that showed me why I am here on this earth. The first thing that you need to get simply that it is a lie from the devil that you do not matter. If God did not care about you, he would have never sent his only begotten, only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins and my sins, the sins of this world. We deserve to be in hell and separated from God from eternity, but Jesus made us worthy by dying for us, by dying for you. And Satan can never love you because you were made in the image of God. All these lies that he tell that he will try to tell you that he loves you, that he'll give you all these things, it is a lie straight out of his mouth. For God's word says that he is the father of lies. He can never love you because when he sees you, he sees the very image that he rebelled against, which is the Lord. Do not let him lie to you. The Lord loves you. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. He is the comforter and the helper. Look at what God has to say in, in Psalms 34 verses 17 through 18. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. And not only is he close to those that are brokenhearted, but look what it says here in Psalms 147 in verse, verse three. It says he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Allow him to heal your broken heart. Allow him to bandage those wounds that have come in since even being in your mother's womb. Allow him to heal those wounds of those, of those scars that were put on your heart and on your mind through those memories of you being abused, of you being, of you being bullied in school, of you feeling like the black sheep and, se and separated and cast out and feeling like nobody loves you. And you can tell when these things have come in through the womb because you could even have such a loving family that is there for you, but all your life you felt like a disappointment. You felt discouraged. You would have these thoughts of telling you to just kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. And then there's these generational curses of premature death, of suicide that runs in the bloodline and mental disorders and all these things that are coming against you. And it will, I promise you, it will not leave you and will not stop you. Antidepressants cannot help you. There are so many testimonies of people that did try to go and seek medical help, but all they started to feel like was just a numb zombie. And many of them, I'm not saying all, but many do end up still killing themselves. Many of them do end up living the rest of their lives in depression and addicted. Their bodies cannot go on a day without taking the pills that, that are prescribed to them. You truly telling me that the perfect God, the perfect father wants you bound to pills, bound to wasting all your money on these medications when he sent his son to be whipped before he got to that to that to that cross to be healed his word says by his by his stripes you're already healed if you go and look at the beating that jesus had to go through he has skeletal muscles being ripped out for you and i to be healed and not be wasting our money and allowing the enemy to come to steal kill and destroy us stealing our money killing us slowly and destroying our bodies the temple of the holy spirit destroying the plans that the lord has for you through this there's no way if that is the god that we serve then i don't want it i'll go back into the world what's the point of that i know it. if this is why it is so important to know god's word and know his will the lord gives us spiritual armor he only gives us one offense everything else is defense 
covering the entire body. The one offense is the sword of the spirit, which is his word. If you do not know his word, you can't fight. You have no offense and everything's going to just keep coming at you and coming at you and coming at you. And this is why Satan can continuously lie to you because you don't know who you are, who you are in Christ. There are so many more verses like this one in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, do not be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Jesus Christ is that hand because he is seated at the right hand of God. Read your word and you will see that. The right hand sh sh symbolizes God's power. Now I've spoken long enough. Let's lead you into a prayer before we even do deliverance. And before we even get to that prayer, you need to be born again and saved. If you are watching this video and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he says that nobody comes unto the Father, which is God, but by me. It says that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And those that shall repent and believe in him shall receive everlasting life. Now this prayer is, it has no power in it, but it's simply just to help you and lead you and guide you unto the Lord. If you know you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, simply repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner in need of a savior. And I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, the savior that you sent here on earth. You manifested in the flesh to die for my sins. I repent, Lord, for every single sin. Forgive me for my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead on the third day. Come into my life, Lord. I submit myself to you. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire. I need you. Help me. I pray for wisdom, guidance, knowledge, understanding, and revelation. Now let's continue into repentance. Before we could even be, you could even be delivered, you need to repent which means you need to act God for forgiveness, apologize and allow him to change and renew your mind. Repentance is changing your mind, stopping committing that same act and say, Lord, I repent for dealing whatever, what it is. It could be like witchcraft or doing, even being the person that bullied somebody or did any type of infliction or the sins that you know that were wrong and that you felt on the inside, this is not wrong, but you still did it anyways. You need to repent before you even continue. After repenting, you need to forgive. It can be another spirit of forgiveness that will not allow you to forgive. But no, the same way it says that we love him because he first loved us. We need to forgive because he first forgave us through Jesus Christ. Forgive those that have abused you, that sexually abused you and touched you and molested you even kidnapped you, however serious it is, that bullied you, that put word curses on you and put you down, forgive them. Forgive everyone that comes to, not to mind. Lord, I pray that you will bring names to their minds and situations right now in Jesus' name that they know they need to forgive that person in Jesus' mighty name. Now after this, we're gonna sever generational curses. Generational curses of premature death, of murder, of suicide and you simply just repeat it i sever the generational curses from my bloodline on my mother's side and my father's side and i repent lord on behalf of the generations behind me and i say lord to forgive me and cut me off from that demonic generational curses in jesus mighty name I sever it now in Jesus name. I sever the generational curse of suicide, 
that is trying to run in my bloodline, it will not touch me no more in Jesus name. I severed that generational curse of premature death in Jesus name. For I am renewed and washed by the blood of Jesus. And his word says that the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. I am not bound no more in Jesus mighty name. Now these things are something simple. I would definitely encourage you to have somebody there for you. This is simply something, uh, a guidance to help you and to get free. I will go to someone you trust. You can even reach out to me if you know me personally and live around me. I'm My wife and I are willing to go out and help and get you set free. Now, after this, the last part is simply renouncing. And you could get delivered from more than one thing right now, but you simply repeat and say this. I renounce the spirit of suicide. I renounce the spirit of depression. I renounce the spirit of anxiety. Satan, I am not your home. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I no longer want you. You cannot be in my life. In Jesus name, come up and out of me now. In Jesus mighty name. Now, before we start commanding them even further, let's pray that the Lord will truly deliver you. Heavenly Father, I pray and I thank you that they made it this far in this video. I pray, Lord, that they would truly and genuinely submit themselves to you and surrender their lives to you, my God. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would illuminate and go into every room in their soul, in their heart, in their mind, my God, in their body, and shed light on the dark areas that they don't even know is dark and reveal things that have been hiding there for years in Jesus name and start to kick them out. Send your angels that you have assigned to deliverance and torment those demonic spirits that are trying to stay in the temple of the Holy Spirit and bring them up and out in Jesus mighty name. Lord, I pray just like your word says that you heal the brokenhearted and bandage their wombs, my King, that you will heal their heart right now, my God. Heal them, Lord from being told that they are not worth it, that they should have been aborted, that they should have been put up for adoption. For those that have been put up for adoption and feel abandoned, my God, that feel like nobody loves them, all those scars, heal them now, my King, in Jesus' name. Touch them, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord. Now we're going to take it. I'm going to take it over from here. I speak to every demonic spirit that is trying to live in their body. They are saved and born again. They have repented and forgiven and renounced you. Satan, you must leave them now by the authority of Jesus Christ as an ambassador of Christ. I command you to leave their body right now in Jesus mighty name. You must come up and out of them. Now you must manifest and go and never come, come back in Jesus name. Now, now for the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. Jesus came to give them life and life more abundantly. He came to set the captives free. For they shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. And they know the truth now that Jesus is Lord over everything in Jesus mighty name. For who the son has set free is free indeed. And he is freeing them right now in Jesus mighty name. You must go, go now, come up and out of them. Now, Lord, place your hand on them and deliver them, my God, in Jesus mighty name. If you start to feel this coughing urge, like you want to start crying, like you need to start le start sneezing, let everything out, start coughing it out, command it to keep on going, keep going, keep going, keep calling it out. That spirit of suicide 
must go in Jesus mighty name. Keep commanding it to go out until it has come out and you feel that weight lifted off of you in Jesus mighty name. And I'm gonna pray that after you're delivered, that the Holy Spirit will fill every place that the enemy has left in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that you will send your Holy Spirit to invade the place that the enemy has just left in their lives, my King, in Jesus name. Bring a refreshing wind in Jesus name. Let them feel your joy. Let them feel the life, the peace, the stillness that you have for them, my King. In Jesus mighty name, let them feel your arms being wrapped around them and comfort them because you are the comforter, Holy Spirit. And I thank you for it. I thank you they are born again. I thank you that you have set them free. My God, Lord, I pray that they will have such a hunger to read your word, that they will have such a hunger to do your will, my God, that they will go out and set the captives free, that they will go out and preach the gospel, that they will send this video to those that they know need help, my King. In Jesus' mighty name, we honor you, my God. We trust you, we believe in you, we have faith in you, we abide in you and you in us, my King. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, that you are the father to the fatherless. Those that do not have a father or even a mother in their lives, Lord, and are dealing with that orphan spirit, Lord, set them free from that as well. In Jesus' name, touch them, my King. Let them never be the same from today on out, my God. Let it be new beginnings. In Jesus' name. Now, ways that you can support is simply by liking and commenting and sharing this video and subscribing. And if you were not saved and you got born again and you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, write in the, com in the comments, I am saved or I just got saved. And if you got delivered, say I got saved and delivered. If you're already saved and you got delivered, write in the comments, I got delivered. If you have a testimony to share, you can reach out to me. There'll be links in the in the description to my Instagram. You can DM me and private message me and let me know if you need any one on one things. I am here. My wife is here to help and serve you at the best that we can. And even if you are blessed and touched and the Lord puts it in your heart to sow a seed, to donate, because we want to do many things for the Lord, go out and feed those that are hungry, clothe them, put them in houses and save up to do the work of the Lord because I know he has called me to full-time ministry. And the way that you can do that will also be in the description. And I thank you for watching. God bless you in Jesus name, amen.